Well, it's finally come to this, guys. Tiger Electronic Handheld Devices. Buckle up. Welcome back to a very special gaming series. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're going to be looking at Tiger Electronic Handheld Games. Yes, in an era when everyone's interested in mobile gaming, especially with the new Switch Lite and all that stuff, we're going to go back to some of the earliest and most pathetic attempts at mobile gaming ever. You know what? Even back in the 90s, we knew this was bad. We were just so desperate for video games that we played this stuff. So, I am playing Sonic the Hedgehog here, and here it is. Uh, this is Sonic. It's one button, you can jump, and you can spin, and you just have to jump over. I, I guess this bug is just going to attack us forever. I don't know how to actually stop him. Oh, I, I, I seem to be getting hit or something. I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to press right really fast. So, um, <laughs> yes. For those of you who did not grow up in the 80s and 90s, this is a mobile game. Um, it uses basically the same technology that you would find in like digital watches of the era. Um, you can see it doesn't actually, it, it's, it's actually quite interesting. So there are just a series of poses of Sonic uh, at all over the screen. And the screen just sort of lights selectively one up. But it's not actually drawing pixels. So this image of Sonic here at this point in the screen can only ever be him standing. See when he runs, his, his bottom legs disappear and the other ones appear. Never can you have the same image appear on the same spot like you can't have a different pose of Sonic in that initial pose So this is Sonic the Hedgehog. I have no idea what's going on. I'm losing lives. This god dang bee will not go away Oh my god, can you kill the bee? Look, I can jump extra high. Oh, I think I just killed the bee Okay, see the importance of experimenting here um, All right, we can kill the bee. I think the bee is like the only boss. I mean actually there should be like a, a Dr. Robotnik boss I also appreciate the, uh, you know, sort of logs or whatever that's on, on the ground there. Um, providing the illusion of movement in a world with a static background. You know, occasionally when we play retro games, I talk about how uh, parallax scrolling in the background of sprite-based games... Oh, there's a bat! ...can make the game seem like that much... Uh, give them, like, the illusion of depth, even though they're sort of like these 2D affairs... But uh, this is sort of the opposite of parallax scrolling. This is static background on a Casio watch, basically. Uh, actually, you know, I, I do seem to recall that some watches did have basic games like this. Maybe I'm mistaken. I don't know. Uh, but yes, this is Sonic the Hedgehog on Tiger Electronic Handheld. You gotta use a lot of imagination, guys. You know what's funny is, like, we've played, like, really old games. Hey, Robotnik, we made it to a boss. We've played really old games, like Atari games and stuff, and sometimes people comment, like, man, that game looks so rough, like, how could you play it? This came out, like, a decade after Atari, and we still played it. I remember asking my grandmother to drive me to a... What the heck was it called? Consumer Electronics Outlet or something like that to buy a Simpsons handheld game. Um, anyway, okay, we're gonna, we gotta keep this moving. There are tons and tons of handhelds that we're gonna be looking at. This has been Sonic the Hedgehog. Let's check out uh, another game here. All right, this is Mortal Kombat on the Tiger Electronic Handheld. We can select between Liu Kang, Sonya Blade, Johnny Cage. Look, it's, it's like the exact same character. Ooh, it could be Sub-Zero, Kano, Raiden. They put a little hat on him to make him Raiden. That is so hilarious. You know what? Actually, kudos to them for having all these options. All right, we're going to pick my favorite, which is Sub-Zero. And we're going to go ahead and fight here. And you can see there's a couple of buttons. You can kick, you can punch, you can do ninja flips and stuff. I don't know, how How would you do Sub-Zero's move? Down, forward, punch. Like, w would they even have the sprites to depict the fact that you have frozen a guy? I think I, uh, he's just hovering in the air. I'm just like punching up and getting him. Oh man, this is, this is so rough, it's hilarious. I don't know how to block in this. There's only four buttons. 
but uh, you know, I, I will fully admit that I'm I'm button mashing. It is uh, I am notorious for button mashing in fighting games. But in my defense, I will say that this is a Tiger Electronics handheld fighting game, and this is probably the only time in my life I'm ever gonna play it. So maybe you can do Sub Zero's moves. Maybe you know the down forward punch things actually do do super moves. But uh, I'm trying. It doesn't seem to do it. So I don't know. Uh, I, you know, I'm really curious for anyone who did play this Mortal Kombat game, how do you do, is it the normal way to do all the moves in this, or, or, you know, is it, uh, is it something different, I don't know, or can you even do the moves, who knows? Okay, you know what, we lost, we've seen Mortal Kombat, we gotta, we gotta keep this going, I, I feel like any one of these games is gonna be too boring if, if we linger on it. I have more to say about the Tiger Electronics generally, but let, let's keep it flowing here. This, by the way, is what you would see if you could light up all the possible sprites in a tiger game. So as you can see, all the potential positions and images of your characters are on the display and the display just selectively lights up little uh, pieces of those images at a time. And this of course is Double Dragon. So we're gonna go ahead and start here. Knockout, okay, we gotta go, we gotta punch guys, oh, look at that kick, that kick looks so awkward, I'm just like kicking him in the gut until he phases out of reality. <laughs> oh, here comes another guy, bald, weird men, tall men are attacking me. Man, that kick is so awkward, can you do a jump kick? You can jump, but you cannot do a jump kick. Alright, so if you loved Double Dragon in the 90s, you know, maybe you play it before school, the school bus comes, you have to pause your NES and just leave it running all day so that you don't lose your spot because there were no save states back in the day. And meanwhile at school, your buddy shows up and is like, yo man, you love Double Dragon, how about some of this? And he shows you this. As crappy as this looked, you would honestly probably play it. Because like we were so desperate, we were, we were like ravenous animals for games back in the day, guys. Man, this is, this is so rough. These games are rougher than I remember. So yes, I had the Simpsons one. I think I had one more. Um, these games, by the way, they were sort of like the poor man's Game Boy. Like, Game Boys were way... Oh, this guy's throwing explosives at me. What the heck? Uh, wait, did I do a jump kick? Oh, you can kick in the air. How about that? Um, I did... Uh, uh, you know, Game Boys were way better than this, obviously. Like, everyone knew it. But Game Boys were quite expensive. I recall these Tiger games were actually quite cheap, and batteries lasted quite long on them because they were so basic, you know? Um, so this is the kind of game you could get, and you could, like, just play it on the bus, or, you know, you could play it, you know, when your parents were watching TV or whatever. You know, it didn't really matter. And if you lost it or got broken, your parents weren't mad at you as much as if you broke a Game Boy or something. Because, uh, you know, it's it's a tiger electronic. It's, it's basically a toy. It's ridiculous. Um, anyway, we, we've just been sort of kicking bald men in the faces here. Dudes are showing up, throwing explosives at us. Is this like Double Dragon? This is this a Double Dragon that you guys remember? I feel like we're doing amazing. We've, like, barely taken any damage. It's crazy. This game also, this one has no sound effects, which is kind of boring. Oh, I kicked him in the face. Let's do a drop kick to the face. I feel like we should beat up one or two more of these dudes and just keep it flowing. I mean, so here's here's the question while you guys are watching this. Like, what other games are we going to find here? So I'm actually playing these games through the Internet Archive, which is a free online library that actually archives not just books and media, but it actually has a huge archive of DOS and Mac games and it has, like, uh, you know, ROMs and stuff. It is basically the Internet's attempt to preserve gaming history. And, you know, as much as we can, like, laugh at these games, I am kind of happy that they exist out there, that the, these things are, are there, because, like, Tiger Electronic Games, like, anyone from the 90s probably remembers this. This probably looks way worse than they remembered. Oh, we got knocked out. All right, so we lost. Um, but, you know, part of me is just, it, I'm so happy this exists. And so when I found out this was a thing, I was like, my God, I got to make an episode and, I, and try all the Tiger Electronics games. So I'm going to try every Tiger Electronic games that the Internet Archive has to offer. So we've seen Double Dragon. You know, here's the question. What other Tiger Electronic games are out there? Um, and you know what? The You can think about that as we go. Each new game will be a new surprise. But let me warn you. There are some, like, pretty ridiculous ones, if this has not been ridiculous enough already. So, what will the next game be? Let's find out. So here's one I bet you would have bet dollars to donuts does not exist. The MC Hammer Tiger Electronics Handheld Game. <laughs> oh yeah, we're about to have a dance-off, y'all. 
Um, oh, we're doing it. I think. I think we are. I can't tell. Okay, start. Uh, we're going. Do it. There we go. All right, we're off. Oh, yeah, there we go. So you just have to, like, outdance Hammer somehow. I don't 100%. Maybe we just have to, like, copy what he does. I think I just lost. Okay, hold on. I think we, we have to actually copy what he does. I was just sort of flailing around on the dance floor, like, in reality, if I ever go dancing. Um, so let's go ahead and start this again. Initiate. All right. What are the moves? Oh, it's like DDR. Look, you have to, like, press the buttons at the right time. My guy's not doing anything. I don't understand what's happening. All right, the buttons to this are utterly perplexing. It's an MC Hammer dance-off game. Uh, enough said. Oh, look, I can actually do some moves. I don't know what the moves to... I mean, well, I'm not copying him at all. I'm trying to get a handshake out of the guy. I'm just starstruck. I'm like, oh, my God, it's Hammer. Remember MC Hammer and his, like, crazy parachute pants? It's, like, uh, totally nostalgic. All right, well, I, I can't figure this one out, but who cares? Uh, what will the next game be? How about Swamp Thing? Isn't that, like, a Marvel property these days or something? Or am I thinking, like, DC, potentially? All right, I'm Swamp Thing. There, I'm chasing a guy. I don't know. Left control and left alt do things, apparently. I can look back at him aggressively. I can, I can be mad. Oh, Swamp Thing mad, angry. Stop shooting, Swamp Thing. Why am I chasing this guy? How do I do stuff? Left and right. For most of these games, it's just the arrow keys and left or right. Uh, but I, I, I suspect there's a key I'm missing here. Oh, what happened? I, I, like, disappeared. Can I chase this guy down? No. What? I'm, like, running towards him. The guy behind me is, like, firing aggressively. I can, like, try and pick things up. Oh, I, like, went into an ooze bucket. I don't know what's happening in this game. All right, you can, you can oozify yourself around... Oh, I think I killed a guy somehow. Okay, just get in there. Get in the pipe. Squeeze in the pipe, man. I'm just evading all the enemies. Okay, you can bend down and get trapped. I can't get up. I can't... Oh, wait. What was that? Get up. Do something. Oh, he threw He threw a, a trash bag. Okay. Swamp thing. Get up. Run. Run for your life. Throw it. Oh, okay. So you got to, like, throw these logs at people. Look, the guy's like a magician. He's, like, throwing a ball at me. Once they bend down, I can't get up. <laughs> oh, I jumped up into a fight. This game is so confusing. You know what's funny? Is, like, this game. these games are so, like, glitchy and difficult to control. But, like, that was, like, literally what they were like when you actually owned them. It's not like, you know, like, oh, yeah, man, if you were playing this in actual Tiger handheld, you know... Uh, hardware, the game would run so much better. It's like, no, this is about correct. It it was this crappy. Um, also, the guy who's running in front of me shooting, he seems to have just pieced out and, like, forgotten about our uneasy alliance. Like, I, I thought he and Swamp Things were pals, but I guess, like, he was in it for himself the whole time. Game over! All right, that was Swamp Thing. Next, we have Batman Forever. You like that, like, really badly drawn Gotham City in the background there? Now, you gotta imagine these games are not meant to be played on TVs. So, like, you know, they, they, they should not have been, like, this this big. You know, usually you'd view this on, like, a really tiny screen. Um, you can throw batarangs and stuff. There's, like, a help thing, too. Oh, you can call in Robin for help? Yeah, help me, Robin! Robin turned into Two-Face somehow. I don't know what I'm doing. Throwing batarangs. You can, like, swing around. Yeah, look at me swing. Two-Face tried to come up from behind me. I just kicked him. Without even turning around, Batman is, like, that confident. All right, ah, oh, there's Two-Face again. Am I just fighting an ar endless army of Two-Faces? Is there something I'm supposed to be doing? If I do nothing, he just runs. So maybe I'll just do nothing for a while. Batman seems ha content just to run. Batman Forever was such a big deal when it came out. I remember when it came out in theaters... And they had, like, McDonald's tie-ins with, like, uh, you know, you could get, like, the Riddler and stuff on, uh, like, cups. When Batman Forever came out, it was kind of, like, at the height of Jim Carrey's popularity. And, like, he was really popular in the 90s. I can't get him. Maybe I'll call in Robin. Yeah! Oh, Robin just punched him in the face. Good job, Robin. Uh, but, yeah, you cannot, you cannot understate or overstate Jim Carrey's popularity in the 90s. The guy was, like, 
You know, he just could do no wrong. And, like, we, we watch Batman and Robin these days, and it's kind of like one of the goofier Batman movies. Like, definitely, I think Tim Burton's Batmans have held up better in the long term than Joel Schumacher's, especially that nightmare of Batman and Robin with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, I love me some Arnie, but, oh, God, it was that movie was total camp. But, uh, yeah, Batman Forever, when it came out, man, it was a big deal. All right, next. How about a game that might actually be a game? This is Space Harrier 2. Um, it's interesting that, like, Sega actually licensed out a lot of their properties, it seems. Uh, like, we've already seen Sonic. This is Space Harrier. There's a few more coming up. Uh, I don't want to, like, spoil the surprises, but there's a few more Sega games in the mix. Uh, but I don't think there's any Nintendo. Like, I, I can't think of any Mario, Tiger Electronic handheld games out there. And, you know, it's probably for the best. Um, I think Nintendo knew not to get involved with Tiger Electronics. I mean, Tiger Electronics was just like printing money back in the day. Like again, like every kid had one of these things. It was so popular. The games sucked, but we were just so desperate to play video games on the go. You couldn't afford a Game Boy, you couldn't afford a Game Gear. But if you had, what was it, like 20 bucks for one of these, I think? Um, I don't actually remember how much these were. I'd be really curious if anyone does remember how much they were. But I, I'm sure they were, like, you know, pennies compared to a real mobile system. Um, so everyone had these. And you would pass them around. You would loan them to friends. Do you guys remember, like, going to school and, like, making trades with your friends? I keep dying, and I don't know why, by the way. Like, you would be like, oh, man, like, I'll lend you my Ninja Turtle if you lend me, like, your He-Man, you know? And, like, or you'd be like, oh, man, I'll lend you my Space Harrier Tiger game and you lend me your Simpsons one, you know? Like, you can make trades like that. I definitely remember trading kids in school for, like, toys, for, like, you know, temporary permission to borrow their toys. <laughs> now, this game is interesting. I keep dying. I'm not entirely sure what I'm hitting. But I will say this, this game feels the most game-like of all the games that we've played. Um, interestingly, I think Space Harrier 2 here actually translates okay to the Tiger handhelds. I, I hesitate to say translates well, because I don't think any game could translate well. But, uh, it does, it does okay. Okay, so we've seen, seen Space Harrier 2. What else we got? How about a little Nightmare Before Christmas? A little Tim Burton stuff going on. I think you gotta, like, pick up snowballs or something. You use the arrow keys to move, and left control is your only button. That guy keeps, like, poking me in the leg and killing me. So, <laughs> I, I don't know what's happening. Are we supposed to stop the snowballs or catch them? Am I doing well or dying? It's it's unclear. The game is unclear. This guy keeps grabbing me. Also, like, this, this game is now very mysterious because we've only seen stuff on the far left side of the screen. What is on the right side of the screen, I wonder? Oh, look, now I'm jumping. Now I am actually jumping. Okay, this is like really basic platforming on the Tiger Electronics. This is, you know what, this is by far the worst system, if you can call it that, that I have like ever played. Uh, Tiger Electronics. I'm just going to avoid avoid things. I think that's what you're supposed to do, is not let him touch you. Um, you can like hide behind the tree, in fact. Yeah, that'll be what we do. We duck under the snowballs. Oh, I still got hit in the face. That sucks. We jump on these things. I don't even know. I remember back when I played the Vectrex, I did the, like, Vectrex special, I tried every Vectrex game, and the Vectrex had some games that were just really bad, but it also had some games I thought were quite good. Um, I feel like I'm gonna be shocked if we find a good game here. I mean, Tiger Games, as you can see, there's lots of, like, movie games, it was, like, a really cheap system to, like, tie in movies and stuff like that, uh, but, yeah, I'm gonna be shocked if we find a good game here today. Anyway, next... How about the well-known property of Skeleton Warriors, The Dark Crusade? Um, I do like the sort of D&D &D kind of feel to it. We have three lives. Oh, God, he has laser guns. Actually, this does look awesome. Skeleton Warriors. Uh, I wish this was a real video game. I mean, look at the character. He actually looks like pretty well established. Oh, my God, the skeletons have multiple arms? This is actually totally cool. Oh, God. Oh, Oh, this is, this is, we're playing a game. There's a bit of a game here. I mocked Skeleton Warriors, but I'm eating my words. I take it back. This is actually, like, kind of cool. Look at the smile on my guy's face, too. Oh, guy's coming at me with an axe. I got him. I got him. Oh, color me impressed. I feel like I might be playing a video game. This is actually kind of cool. All right, Skeleton Warriors. There you go. You know, before this game, I was going to say, I think the only game... Oh, we missed a sword. 
I was gonna say, I think the only game that would actually like translate properly to uh, Tiger Electronics would be Snake. Because the thing with Snake is you could just create a whole grid of dots and you could have it set up so that, uh, uh, you know, you just build a snake as you go. Like Snake, I think, would actually work as a Tiger Electronics handheld game. I'm shocked they never did it. I guess they looked at the concept for Snake and they're like, what are those, pixels? I don't think so. Oh, he just picked up a sword. Yes, I can jab him with the sword now. He don't need no gun. He's got a sword. Notice how his arm is now like above his shoulder. When he had the gun, it was like below. Again, you uh, you can't, oh, we got a power up too. Man, we're doing awesome. This is playing a game. You can't uh, have the same sprite appear on the same area of the screen uh, once again. But yeah, I guess Tiger was not interested if, if their games required making a grid of pixels, they were like, forget that. Oh, it's a big skeleton monster. He went down in one hit. Oh, my God, he's behind me. Oh, no. Shoot. Oh, I love how he just shoots behind him. Yes. Oh, this is this is cool, man. I, You know what? I died? Okay, I have two lives left. Oh, we just beat... Did we beat him? No, this is like a boss. Oh, he's teleporting all over the place. Die. <laughs> it's so easy to kill him. <laughs> oh man all right you know we found a tiger game that i kind of like i uh i i feel i feel much shame admitting that how do we keep going here i feel a lot of shame on the inside uh but i kind of like this game this guy he's like a han solo guy dual wielding pistols fighting like multi-armed skeletons he's he shoots behind himself so casually you know, look at that 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 uh, feathered hair. He's wearing a giant skeleton armor. This guy is cool, man. This game is kind of cool. All right, skeleton warrior, or whatever the heck it was called. Kind of a neat game. I can't believe we found one. Um, I'm kind of sad to leave it, but uh, you know, in the interest of uh, continuing to mix things up, I think we got to keep this uh, game train going. So, all right, we had fun with you, skeleton warriors. What's next? All right, here we have Back to the Future, but not based off of the movie Back to the Future. Based off the cartoon, I think, from what I can tell. Um, there was, yes, there was a Back to the Future cartoon. It was, it was okay. I mean, it wasn't like bad, bad, but I mean, it was not the movies. The movies are literally works of, of art, of fine art. They're like a rich mahogany, uh, you know, in movie form. Oh, God, I just hit a rock. Here's another weird thing about this uh, Tiger game. So it has a D-pad. Left and right move the DeLorean left and right, but up initiates like repair and down initiates break. So I don't know why accelerate was not up. I guess because it was, I guess the D-pads weren't sophisticated enough to handle like an up at the same time. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Um, but we are at 30 miles per hour. Can we keep going? I want to try and like repair stuff. Is anything happening? Oh, we're going up to 60. That's something. Oh, I wasn't paying attention and I hit a rock. I just want to see like the the time dilation effects. Like when you go when you go through time, I want to hit 88, man. 88 is where it's at. All right. So we're at 36. We're at 50. There is also a rescue button, but I have yet to see a person that you need to rescue, so I'm just going to Pretend it's not there. Oh, avoid that. This game is actually tricky because, like, it's very easy to avoid the stuff that's coming if you could, like, understand depth-wise where it was coming from. But everything has this, like, weird skewed perception. So I, I don't fully understand exactly what we're supposed to do here. The DeLorean looks great, by the way. Uh, but this is, like, a very basic driving game. I think these Tiger games, too, by the way, like, they have a tiny bit of novelty to them. But after you've played them for more than like, oh, lightning bolts, lightning bolts. Oh, we're at 88. We're going through time, baby. Boom. Somebody play the power of love. Don't take money. Don't take fame. And we're traveling back into like BC times. Oh, now there's a pyramid. And now what do we have to rescue the pyramid from someone? Start. Continue. We made it to BC times. All right. I, I, I don't know what we're doing in this game, but there's a pyramid now. At least we got to see going through time. Uh, but yes, I, I feel like these tire games have like a little bit of novelty. But like after you've played them for like five or ten minutes, I don't know if there's a lot of replay value here. Crap. 
So I think what I'm saying is like as a kid, if you own one of these things, like after you played it for a bit, like, like I just don't see playing this over and over and over again. But I don't know, maybe there's like a challenge in like actually getting good enough to like get the, all the time zones. Uh, anyway, Back to the Future, amazing movie, really crappy Tiger Electronics handheld game. What else we got? How about Battletoads? Now, I already said Nintendo did not license their games for Tiger, but uh, Battletoads is a, uh, you know, it was on the NES, so what's it going to be like? Uh, it's a toad in everyone's favorite level, the one where you dangle from the rope. I'm just kidding. I, I, actually, I don't think people dislike that level. Everyone's The level everyone hates is the Turbo Tunnel. Thank God. Could you imagine... Tiger Electronic Turbo Tunnel. Actually, you know what? The Turbo Tunnel is one level that might actually work on this because all you would need are walls up or down. Like there's kind of two vertical levels. And then your toad is always kind of on the left scrolling, uh, you know, and the world just sort of scrolls. Yeah, you know what? The Turbo Tunnel, surprisingly, <laughs> is one level in Battletoads. It actually could translate fairly well here. Having a hell of a time hitting these birds. Like, like I can't get them. This is ridiculous. Just swinging around. There's, there's two buttons. Attack left and attack right. I just killed a tornado, I think. I have 72 seconds to do what? I have no idea. I don't know if, like, we, we want to survive until the time's up or we have to kill, like, a certain amount of enemies before the time is up. There's a devil face down there blowing winds at me. I'm just gonna... You know, I'm just gonna cheese the game by like staying over here and kicking anything that happens to fly up my way i seem invulnerable nothing can hurt me we have glitched out the tiger electronics battletoads handheld edition we have found the sweet spot look at this they can't compete i am also by the way who am i i'm rash um the battletoads all had like really disgusting names it was like rash pimple and zits i think were their names which is, which is really gross. Like, aren't teens supposed to be very sensitive about pimples? Why would you name, like, a Ninja Turtles kind of knockoff trio of, like, badass, you know, kind of, like, cool, cool dude fighting toad things? Why would you name them after, like, pin, uh, pimples and, like, you know... Well, like, why isn't there emphysema? Is he, like, the fourth battle toad? They, like, cut him out, you know, like, pilot testing showed, like, oh, God, like, focus groups, like, did not take well to emphysema. They're okay with rash, pimple, and zits, but, uh... Oh, look, a boss! It's, uh... Is it the Dark Queen or whatever? We made it. Four seconds left. Three seconds left. Oh! I think I'm punching her. I think I'm punching her. Oh, she damaged me, though. One second left. Do we win or lose at zero? Do we win or lose? Tell me! I think... I think that's us losing. It's ambiguous. Maybe he's... He's drunk with joy. Oh, no, the game's over. Yeah, we lost. <laughs> All right, next game. How about Space Jam? You guys remember Space Jam when uh, Michael Jordan played basketball with uh, Bugs Bunny and stuff, Daffy Duck, for control of the universe? Can we play Space Jam? Oh, we just got a score. We got a hoop. We we are rocking it, man. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if you, if you guys can, can follow what's happening. I think I stole the ball. I'm passing it to Daffy repeatedly. I'm just trying to like run towards the net. He's getting it in. I'm. Am I stealing it? What's happening? Oh, I got the ball again. 88, 87. We have like, what does it give you? Like 90 seconds to score as much as possible. I think I have the ball. This is like really, this is really awkward. <laughs> oh man, if Skeleton Warriors is like an actual good game, this is like MC Hammer version two. Man, how did MC Hammer get his own video game? What, what was that conversation, that pitch meeting like? Like some executives go in, they're like, yo, Hammer. They're like, you're on top of the world, baby. Can't do no wrong. They're like, we have an idea for you. How would you like to be in a video game? And he's like, oh, sweet. And he's like, what are you guys thinking? Like, Nintendo, Sega Genesis? They're like, even better, baby. Like, how about this? Tiger electronic handheld device and they like slap down like I don't know what what would they put in front of him like space harrier like like literally he must not have even been in the room they must have just like contacted his agent and they're like hey we're putting hammer in a game and, and they were just like all right you know 10 G's please or actually they probably had to pay him way more a couple million imagine paying millions of dollars for the 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 tiger electronics device handheld rights for MC hammer <laughs> 
Somebody did it. I guarantee that happened. I guarantee. Uh, the only thing more amusing would be like if MC Hammer himself, like it was his idea. He was like, hey, you know what? I have been hooked, hooked on this Back to the Future Tiger game. I want to be in a Tiger game. I don't care what it costs to my reputation or my trustworthiness. I just get me in a get get me in a Tiger Electronics game, you know. And they made it happen. They made it happen. Anyway, I think we won at basketball. Uh, very confusing. Uh, what else we got? Okay, how about the incredible crash test dummies? You guys remember these guys? They uh, started off as, uh, what were they? They were like a safety thing on TV, but they were kind of so cool that uh, they made like a TV show and stuff about them. Um, I don't know how to move, by the way. You can, I, can, I can like poke a dog out the window. I think I'm just like straight up cr like piling through all the pylons. Oh God, out of the way, out of the way. Okay, up and down are supposed to do something, but they do nothing. The wheel! It's not even attached! Oh god, we're headed for the wall! <laughs> Alright, we're just crashing into everything, I guess. You know, I guess this is the point of the game, is to crash. So, we can, like, break. I, I don't understand, I don't understand the buttons. I, I, there's an accelerate button and a crash button, and left and right do nothing. So, uh, there you go. There you go. And and I guess we're slowly driving towards the wall, and we're going to crash. Uh, next. Here's a franchise I know nothing about. Vindicators. Okay, we are a tank. It's going around. Uh, shooting. Oh, that's kind of cool. You can, like, move... Move the, the targeting thing to the left and right, and you can move. That's actually not too bad. Not great, but not terrible. It's okay, there's some game here. I feel like I'm actually playing some game. Is Vindicators a game, by the way? Is this on another system? It, it The name seems familiar, like this was on Atari or something like that. But I can't be sure of it. Oh, and I can actually move left or right, too. That's cool. So you can, like, do this. This is actually one of the more sophisticated uh, Tiger games I think I've, I've played. Boom. The controls are a little wonky, though, on the keyboard here. Oh, shoot. Uh, oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, shoot! <laughs> like, literally shoot! Not just shoot, I'm losing, but shoot! Fire the cannons! We are somehow still alive. I will take it. I don't know what these things on the far right side of the screen are. Like, uh, little caps. Are, like, what are they? Are we supposed to destroy these things? Boom. Boom. Give me... Reveal yourself thing. We're running out of fuel. That might be the ultimate defeat. Are we supposed to do anything? I, I, I have no idea what's happening. Um, we are... Notice, too, how, like, the black sprites on the left or right of the wall are covering up background that's being colored there. That's actually kind of a cool effect. It's interesting. Oh, I think we got a key or something. Fire! Do something! Vindicators! It's kind of okay, I guess. Kaboom! Uh, next! How about Robin Williams in Hook? This was a great movie. Uh, I am... I don't know which guy I am. I don't know what's happening. Initiate! They, th this game actually... Does this, is this an opening cutscene? What is happening? Literally. Oh, I just shot an egg at a guy. Okay, I figured it out. <laughs> I was like, I think the game's broken. No, it's an egg shooting game. There's literally one button. Fire egg. There's no way to lose. No way to win either. You're just firing an egg. Is there anything else to this game? Buttons don't seem to do anything. The buttons, they do nothing. What? What? What is this? It's like the Crash Test Dummies all over again. All right. Well, Hook. <laughs> Remember the one scene where I think they threw food in the guy's face? Oh, Hook actually shows up. Can we do anything to him? The eggs are going right over him. He's like, ah, I'm standing in the exact correct position to, to be immune from your eggs. And I will brandish my sword aggressively. I don't know why Hook's a, you know, Spanish or Italian. Hey, he killed one of the lost boys. 
Or we ground them up into eggs to fire at the bad guys. Oh my god, he killed two of them. Or captured, he captured them by stabbing them, piercing them through the heart with his sword. You know, it's a kid's video game after all. They can't be killing kids. Maybe level two is different. Oh, look, it's, it's totally different. Okay. And I still don't know what the buttons are. Oh, look! I'm resting. Oh, I fist pumped them. Oh, I'm kicking them in the head. Oh, my God. This game actually has levels. Um, you know what? This game is bad. Uh, oh, look, I just saved a kid. Maybe it's not that bad. Maybe I just need to, like, learn the buttons. You know, if you press all the buttons at once, you can kind of figure it out. Oh, that guy has the key, too. I saw it. Get him. Get him. Oh, I got the key. And we're gonna free the kid. Oh, we totally did. Oh, Peter Pan's come to save the day. Oh, jab, jab. He's jabbing hook right in the gullet. Boink, boink. That totally, that, isn't that the splitting image of Robin Williams? The late, great Robin Williams. I don't know what I'm doing here. Just, if you hit all the buttons, you win in this game, apparently. Uh, oh, you can, like, it, it's an actual sword fight that we're having here. I think I'm losing. Somehow. Um, poking him in the head. He's like, ow, ow. Not my head, not in the face. Oh, and he is done. We just killed Hook. Game over. We win. What's the next level? Kind of curious. I was just fighting Hook again. Only with cannonballs and Tink. Interesting. Um, you know what? I got to give credit to this game for having multiple levels. For actually figuring out a way to have multiple levels in a Tiger Electronics handheld game like... Mind blown. I did. I would never have thought that were a thing. I mean, of course, all the games that we've been playing, everything from Sonic to Double Dragon, would have multiple levels, and there'd be different enemies and stuff you see in later levels, but this is like levels with like different gameplay in the in the levels. It's kind of interesting. Oh, did we beat Hook again? I'm just flying through this game. What's the next level? Um, now you have to do both at once. That seems uh, pretty ambitious. Game over. Uh, don't worry, we're reaching the limits of our gameplay anyway. Um, so yeah, Hook. Kind of interesting. Next we have a another Sega game. Uh, this is Altered Beast. This was one of the pack-in titles with the Sega Genesis. And they decided to go ahead and uh, put it into a Casio watch, basically. A Tiger handheld game. Um, so in Altered Beast... I actually have that one on the list to play at some point for you guys because it is, uh... Oh, he just turned into a wolf. Oh, look, and the head changes. That's cool. Altered Beast is kind of a cool Genesis game. Uh, it really is, like, a really old one. It's one of the first games I ever played on a Genesis back when, like, my dad borrowed a Sega Genesis from a friend one weekend and we played it. Um, it basically is, like, a shirtless guy, a shirtless kind of He-Man guy who's, like, wandering a graveyard, killing ghouls with his bare hands. But eventually he turns into like a wolf or a bear. I think in later levels you can turn into like dragons and stuff. And you just go around like punching the undead. And it's basically Altered Beast. It's, uh, you know, like pro werewolf, basically. Uh, I th where are all the ghouls, by the way? Do we kill them all? Oh, there they are. Come here, ghoulie. Kick you in the shins. Oh, look, and now we're fighting like a minotaur guy. There must be a way to like... Oh, yeah, shoot fireballs at him. I knew there was a way. Altered beast, I am a wolf. I am the most altered beast of all. Man. Alright, next level, I guess. Back in the graveyard! <laughs> I guess it really... It, it's really hard to have multiple stages in a video game when you have hard-painted a graveyard onto the back of your little gaming system. So you're not really gonna have... You're, gonna, you're not really gonna be able to like change the scenery all that much. You can have different creatures show up. This dog's biting me in the butt. There we go. I like his little backhanded punch. He doesn't even look around. But you can have different creatures showing up, but you aren't really going to be changing the mood or atmosphere. This is basically Altered Beast Level 1 forever. Because uh, Level 1 takes place in the cemetery. Come on, Wolfie. Anyway, so you've seen one level. I mean, like, we've basically seen the whole game. Like, <laughs> next. Here's another one that's kind of interesting. Golden Axe. Get your axe on. Golden Axe was one of my favorite Sega Genesis games. Hew, hew. I guess you can only play as like the warrior dude. You can punch guys behind you and in front of you as you would need to. There's also a magic button. 
Uh, and I just picked up the magic. Some of the games we've been playing require you, there's like a pick up button and you have to like pick up items that you're near. I really hate that in video games. I, I really like how in Golden Axe you're just picking stuff up automatically actually. Um, and actually, so far, I would say this is not as good as Skeleton Master or whatever that game was, Skeleton Warrior. But it's, so far, actually, it's, like, one of the more playable games I, I found. I found, like, like it's, you know what's funny? It's not that different from, uh, like, Double Dragon or whatever. But in Double Dragon, it sort of felt like guys were hitting me for no reason. Like, guys would walk right up into my face and start hitting me, and there was no way to block it. This kind of felt like I could kill guys before they got close enough to, like, do anything to me. So here, let's try the magic. hey Fireballs everywhere! <laughs> that totally killed the guy. Oh, now we get his dragon. Oh my god, this is like a big part of uh, Golden Axe, is being able to ride the dragon. Um, oh, look, and the dragon can even, like, like turn around and shoot behind him. There's, like, the, the female warriors are attacking us. Oh, there's two bad guys at the same time. hey oh hey -o. Um, interesting. You know what? It's interesting. So far, like, Space Harrier was okay. Like, as far as Tiger Electronics games go, Golden Axe here seems okay. I feel like Sega, ha actually, surprisingly enough, is, like, semi-rocking the Tiger handheld. Like, even though, like, Hook was kind of impressive because it had multiple levels, but I feel like the gameplay was much sloppier. This feels a little more in my con- Like, I feel like I'm actually kind of in control of what's happening. Which is kind of cool. Alright, magic time again! Zoop, 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 zoop! Oh, it even has different magics. Lightning bolts. That was a thing in uh, Golden Axe. If you had, like, one potion versus four, you did more damage when you had four versus one. Oh, I love the death pose there. It's just, like, butts in the air, his head's in the dirt. Very hilarious. Uh, anyway, alright, so Golden Axe is kind of cool. Kind of cool. Guys, have you, have you been able to predict any of these, like, crazy games we've been playing? Or, like, games like Hook and stuff like that? Uh, I got a game coming up that uh, surely no one would have guessed that there would be a video game about. Uh, I like how I have to fight this guy literally as he's behind me. You can, like, jump his lightning bolts. Boom, I think we killed him. Oh, no, we died. <laughs> anyway, all right. What is this mysterious next game? Let us find out. How about Apollo 13, the game? Yeah, you heard me right. Apollo 13, the video game. I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work, so we're going to wing it. But I don't think... I think this is the only video game that Apollo 13 ever got. I... Oh, God, what am I doing? What am I doing? Uh-oh, we're, we're going to crash something into a thing. Are we just in free orbit? What is happening? What am I trying to do here? The buttons... The buttons seem to, like, move things around on the screen randomly. Okay. Um, yes, remember Apollo 13 starring Tom Hanks and Gary Sinise? Boy, that movie was was like a thrilling endeavor for children. Surely kids would want to play this video game about a bunch of astronauts stuck in orbit. I mean, like, you know, not to belittle astronauts or anything, but, like, it wasn't really made as a kid's movie. It was, like, that was, like, fully an adult movie. As a kid, I'm sure I would have found Apollo 13 utterly boring. And this game, this game is is utterly perplexing. I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing. What is happening? Like, like, am I supposed to keep the lanner in range? I have six seconds left. We're going to find out if I won or lost. Does this look like victory to you guys? Is, did I win? Is that a win? Zero seconds left. Game over. We, we lost at Apollo 13. I'm very broken up about it, but I guess we'll move on. So here's a treat. Robocop 2. And coming up next, it's sequel, Robocop 3. Um, Robocop was a incredibly uber-violent movie that, for some reason, they thought that they should market at children, and they did. And here is the video game, uh, incarnation of it. Uh, shoot. Okay, that's forward, that's okay. So shoot forward, shoot back. And you can also shoot people who are above you. But nobody's above the law. Oh god, am I out of bullets? I'm out of bullets! Can I pick up- <laughs> I'm like trying- I'm like, excuse me, sir, do you have some bullets? I ran out of bullets. What do I do? Can I just... I'm a, I'm a machine. Can't I just punch him? You just stand here and die when you run out of bullets? This is Robocop? I mean, it's realistic that you need bullets, but... Come on, man. Give me your bullets. Your shoes untied, citizen. Oh my god, we soft-locked Robocop. I think. Or this guy's just taking forever to kill me. Stop throwing grenades at me, you idiot! Just shoot me! 
Ah, oh, my leg! I'm injured! Alright, we're trying this one again. We actually have to pick up bullets. If you don't pick up bullets, you're gonna lose at Robocop the Tiger handheld experience. You jerk. Boom! Get out of here. I guess you have to be, like, very sparing with your ammo then. Uh, oh, no, shoot him in the face. Ah, 24 bullets! Boom! I like how people just walk up to me, and I get to, like, blast them point blank in the face! Like, his face would literally be a crater. Boom, boom. Alright. Boom. You know what? It's kind of funny that you just straight up lose if you run out of ammo, but it's kind of gamey. I feel like it's, it's not bad. You know, uh, th there are definitely worse, like Apollo 13. Ah, oh, we just died. So we suck. Uh, you, not bad, not bad. Look at the buildings in the top right, though. Like, it literally looks like a child in MS Paint drew the background for this game. Like, if you showed me this with, like, the, the colorful eaves, you know, awning or whatever on the window on the left there, and, like, the yellow ground, I would not think this was RoboCop, one of the most violent movies of the 80s. But here it is, marketed at kids. And of course, Robocop was followed by Robocop 3, which is a far more inferior movie. Uh, did not have the original actor, did not have the original writer or anything like that. I feel like the first, first Robocop was my favorite. It definitely was just so meta and like it actually was like a meaningful movie as you know it's this incredibly uber violent movie but it like actually had like a, a tale to tell this like tragic tale of like a guy having his life stolen and he becomes like a robot and stuff um robocop 2 i think was a bit of a regression towards sort of typical comic book villainy but it was okay I, it has a bit of charm robocop 3 he's fighting ninjas and he has a jetpack it's terrible. Oh, God. Look at that pose. He's just like, give it to me. <laughs> he, Robocop is just like, he has no shame anymore. He's like, just taking it up the patoot. He's like, I'm in this horrible movie. I have no shame. Um, did I just get blasted out of the butt with some explosives? Or <laughs> You just stand in front of the guy shooting him. By the way, um, I think some of these games lack backgrounds. Notice how this game is on like a white background. I think the actual Tiger game had a background, but of course this is all being emulated on the Internet Archives website. Um, and again, it is amazing that they have done this and that they have archived these Tiger electronic handheld games. But um, I think obviously this one, for instance, is kind of like incomplete game over for some reason. I think we killed too many civvies. Uh, but this one is obviously incomplete in that it doesn't have the background. So, you know, when it, for all you RoboCop 3 Tiger Electronics handheld fanatics out there, you're going to be a little disappointed with the emulated offerings of the Internet Archive. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. But from RoboCop to Judge Dredd, we're sticking with this sci-fi cop theme. So let's see how RoboCop or how Judge Dredd compares to RoboCop. So Judge Dredd can actually punch and kick. Did I die already? What What's happening? Um, he can also... I think he can shoot. Do I need to get bullets? Hey, look. A ladder. Oh, I can climb the ladder. Can I punch the guy? Get back out here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he can wallop him. All right. Oh, here comes a guy. Can we punch him? Oh, we can. Oh, my God. A gun. Oh, it went away. No. Oh, I got shot again. Oh, this game sucks. Where's the ladder? Get out here and take a lick and oh this guy's shooting me in the leg. Where'd the other guy go? This is ridiculous. I can't attack anyone. This game is too advanced for me. Oh, I can't even catch that guy. What's happening? Oh no. Oh, I missed the gun again. Robocop. I should never have made fun of you. Oh god. Oh, I'm gonna get shot in the gut. <laughs> this game sucks. <laughs> oh. Oh my god. Remember when this movie came out? And Stallone was like, I am the law. Well, I don't know what that has to do with anything, but this game sucks. Next, we have Karnov. Yes, Karnov. What is Karnov, you ask? I have no earthly idea. It is a man who spits fireballs. He, I think he can throw a boomerang. Nope, don't have the boomerang. He fights rock monsters. 
He's kind of like a man-sized Toki. He sort of got the, you know, like, 1930s barbell-lifting muscular man mustache. He's bald with a giant ear earring. Ah, Carnav. Classic Carnav. Who is this guy? Was he supposed to be a mascot? Is this from something? Or is it just like they needed a name for this guy and they were like, you know what's a cool name? Carnav. Y you don't see enough Carnavs in, uh, in media and fantasy, so. Who knows? It's Carnav. It's better than Judge Dredd. I will give it that. He died to a bat to the face. <laughs> we have unlimited lives? I don't even know. Carnav, it's a mystery, man. Apparently, you can throw boomerangs in this game. Uh, I don't know where you get them, though. This gargoyle keeps appearing on the mountain. Stage two! We passed a level in Carnav. Now... Oh, I have a shield. Look at this. Oh, that guy's just throwing rocks at me. But they can't hurt Carnav! Not with his impenetrable shield. I think that actually was super effective. I think there's like, what, five weapons? If you look at the bottom, it looks like there's like five weapons to get. Maybe Carnav is just like a super sophisticated game. Like unlocks levels of sophistication beyond your wildest dreams if only you can get to the furthest reaches of Carnav. Uh, we could not, however. So there you go, Carnav kind of cleanses the palate after those bad Robocop and Judge Dredd games. Next up, we have Batman, based on the Tim Burton Batman, actually. Um, not based on the... Oh, I'm dead already. Not based on Batman Forever. This is based on the uh, Tim Burton movie. Um, you know what, actually? Uh, I don't really remember the the Batman Forever game at this point. Like, all the Tiger games are just melding together into a mess of, like, just sort of uh, bland, forgettable... Uh, oh, God, games. You die so easily. Is that it? Game over. Also, it's like three Jokers were attacking me. Batman... By Tim Burton. I was about to say it kind of feels like a bit of a game, but like, God, I wish you had like more than one hit. Uh, anyway, next. If Double Dragon disappointed you, how about Super Double Dragon? It's also going to disappoint us, isn't it? Of course it is. It's a Tiger handheld game. All right. The graphics look slightly better. And how do you punch behind yourself? Is there a way? I, I can't figure it out. I can't figure out how to jump even. Oh, what? I jumped to the far side of the screen. Oh, yeah, there you go. Okay, you have to, like, jump to attack behind. Ooh, I like how the guys have, like, a death animation. That's kind of cool. Animation. A single frame, I should say. Um, okay. I, 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 it's telling me to go. How do I walk forward? <laughs> oh, there's actually a walk forward button. There are nunchucks on the ground. Can I get those? No? Is, that, is this just off the table? Okay. Kick that guy! Kick that guy! Kick that guy! Okay, the bad guys, this this actually does look way better than the first Double Dragon that we played at the beginning of the video. Hey, it looks more advanced and stuff like that. I mean, I, I definitely would not say it's like a good game. It's no Skeleton Warriors, but uh, it's it's an improvement. Okay, so I don't know. Is this supposed to be... So maybe the, fir the first Double Dragon... Double Dragon was originally an arcade game. It's, it's widely known as being on the NES, but it was on other systems too. Um, but Super Double Dragon, I think, was a Super Nintendo game. So is this the port? Oh, God, think about that. Think about that. Is this the port of the Super Nintendo version onto Tiger handheld electronic devices? My God. You know what? I would love to speak to someone who worked at Tiger who programmed one of these games. I use the word program very loosely because, like, it's not like programming a more sophisticated game. It's very, very, very basic. But, I mean, it is still a program. Somebody had to program it. There must have been crazy technical limitations uh, on this. I mean, in the, the screen is the most obvious limitation, but certainly there must have been technical limitations, too. It'd be really interesting to, like, hear more about this. But anyway, beating up a bunch of, like, endless martial arts karate thugs. All the levels look alike. It's, of course, Super Double Dragon. We're doing far better than the first one, but nonetheless, uh, we, we got to keep this moving. We got to keep this moving. So Super Double Dragon, there you go. Next. Now we have Gauntlet. I'm interested to see how this works. This game has some of the most complicated controls. Believe it or not, the MC Hammer game had the most complicated controls. But this game has second, I think. It has four buttons. I mean, some games we've played have had four buttons. But this one looks the most complicated. There's attack, pick, bomb, uh, use. There's all sorts of buttons here. Let's just hop into it and see if we can figure it out. So it's an actual maze that you have to navigate. 
Oh my god, this actually feels like a game. How do we pick? Oh, we just picked that up? Kill these guys? Wow, actually, you know what? It's weird. The perspective actually kind of works. I actually feel like I'm exploring a maze. Oh my god, this is a game! <laughs> this is actually a neat game. Look, we're, we're like, you can kind of actually figure out what we're doing here. We're walking through a maze, and it makes sense. The geometry of it makes sense. Oh god, I think we might have died, but we're playing a game! This is awesome! Oh my god, I'm exploring a maze. I'm, I'm like so excited. I'm like, a maze! It's amazing! Come here, let's kill this fish monster thing. Okay, this is up- this is- this officially is up there with Skeleton Warriors. I color me impressed. There's two games- oh my god, we found a key! Let's totally get that. I don't know where the door is. We have one key and one bomb. I forget what the bomb button is. Let's use it on this guy up here. Like, I like that I can see guys at a distance and I can go up and I can catch them! Um, oh, another key. Don't mind if I do- oh, I think I walked into a guy and took damage. Okay, let's bomb this guy. Hold on over here. hey -oh! I think I just killed everyone on the screen. Okay, so that's what the bomb does. Cool, you can go forward and back. Oh my god. It's like, you know what it's like? It's like a super primitive version of Zybots. You guys remember Zybots? We might have just run out of time or something like that. I don't know what just happened. Another level! Oh my god! <laughs> So Gauntlet is like a classic, classic arcade game. One of the things I was never a huge fan of in Gauntlet is the fact that you like slowly lose health as you play. I mean, a, lot, a number of Gauntlet fans are fine with it and, and so on. So if, if you're okay with it, that's fine. Um, I am noticing though that our power is slowly draining. So they did carry that over. I mean, it's one of the most iconic things about Gauntlet, whether you like it or not. Gauntlet is where you have a crazy amount of health and it slowly drains. Um, that was initially sort of implemented as like a poor man's timer, I think, uh, when they designed Gauntlet. But wow, this is this is crazy, man. I I was you know what I thought I thought today was going to be a big joke. We weren't going to discover any good games, and you know what I still don't think this is like a good game. But like this. You know, I said, like, these Tiger games, they have sort of novelty value for, like, 15 seconds or 5 minutes, and then it runs out, and then, you know, what are you supposed to do? But this is, like, there's worlds to explore. You know, like, there's a maze here. Like, you could learn this maze, and you could learn where the power-ups are. Oh, my God. Like, mind blown! Mind blown! Gauntlet! Gauntlet! I'm sad we're not ending on this. Unfortunately, this is our second last game. Uh, but, of course, the last game is going to blow our minds, right? All right, we've seen Gauntlet. What's, what's the very last game? The game that I have saved for us, guys. It is a giant tentpole franchise. It is a monster of gaming. Surely they would have done it justice in its port to the Tiger Electronics handheld device. Let's take a look at Goldeneye for the Tiger Electronic handheld device. Well, it's everything I expected it to be. There's a woman riding on me. I look like more like Archer than uh, Bond than Pierce Brosnan. Um, I'm just running around killing a bunch of thugs who are all like flying in. The animations make no sense. Uh, you know, I thought maybe after playing Gauntlet, I was like, "There's no way. There's no way, right? That they would actually have made a first person, first person ish game on the Tiger. Could you imagine a first person game on Tiger Electronic handheld device?" Honestly, it almost could work. I could almost see it working, but they went with crappy platformer instead. I think what I have learned through our little journey here is that the worst games on the Tiger Electronics handheld devices were the platformers. These like games where you have to run around and like guys show up and you just, they walk up to you and you just punch them right in the face. I mean, Skeleton Warriors, they pulled it off. Somehow. I, I can't even put my finger on it exactly about why that one was different. But Skeleton Warriors kind of pulled it off. This is not pulling it off. This is just a mess. I mean, it's okay. We definitely played worse Tiger games. I don't even know what the worst Tiger game that we played today was. I feel like they all tied equally. Oh, no, wait. Maybe it was the MC Hammer. Oh, no, no. It was Apollo 13. That was the worst. And that wasn't even a side-scroller. So you know what? You can make bad uh, Tiger games. They don't have to be side-scrollers, but my, oh my. I don't know. I I think, uh, so, so Skeleton Warriors was good. Gauntlet surprised me. Gauntlet is not my favorite arcade game, by the way. 
but they found a way to actually make a good version of it for Tiger. Uh, I use good in quotation marks because treat it all with a grain of salt. Um, there were some interesting entries like the MC Hammer game. It was creative. We had the Back to the Future game. All in all, though, if you didn't grow up playing the Tiger Electronics handheld games, you didn't miss anything, you don't have to go back and play them, if, even if you like retro games, you can forget about this era. This is okay. That said, it was kind of fun and silly and zany. I just threw an explosive pen. Uh, it was sort of, it was like a weird, weird throwback for me to go back and play these games today because I, I do remember these being in the schoolyard and stuff in the 90s. So, um, now I know there are more Tiger games out there. These are all the ones I could find on the Internet Archive. But what are some other Tiger electronic handheld games that you guys remember? Um, are there any Tiger games that are great that honestly, you know, like Golden, uh, not Golden, like Gauntlet, would actually surprise me, you know? Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have any uh, suggestions or memories or anything like that. And I uh, hope this video brought you guys a lot of nostalgia. If it did, don't forget to like the video and subscribe and all that jazz. I will be back with a real video game soon. And uh, until then, my friends, you all take care of yourselves, and we'll see you soon. Peace. Don't judge me. This game is oddly addicting. Let's just leave it at that, okay? <laughs>